Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to match two. Currently, Wizards have a pretty big 1-0 lead. I say pretty big because if you just missed it, that was a demolition. 25,000 gold big. I believe they lost one turret in the entirety of the game. Three barons. That was a very, very one-sided affair. And it was like Jason was saying towards the, the end of the game. It wasn't one particular champion or one particular player. It was alternate, let's be honest, being beaten in every lane. So they need to shake it off. Realize where the mistakes went, realize which skill shots they didn't land, and work at landing them. See, if, got that the moves. Works, see if that works out for them. We will moves see, like of Jagger. course. You can, of course, vote for who you think is going to win this game. And as it stands, you know, over on lolesports.com, it's not how you'd think it would. No, right now, Team Alternate have 56% of the vote, whereas Wizards have 44% of the vote. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say people were just voting for who they recognized. I went, well, I know the name Alternate, so they'll win this and game. And they tuned in and went, oh my god. You can still vote. So head over to lolesports.com, click on matches. It's in the top right-hand corner, whichever way that is on the screen. And then just vote for who you think is going to win this matchup uh, based on what you've just seen. Mm -hmm. So, what do we think? What do we think, game two? Oh, is it going to be more of the same? Java is a bad. I think, I think Java will be banned out. I feel like in that particular game, the impact that Matraco had with Java in every single lane is, uh, is definitely something that's going to uh, you know, work into their favor. So, if Jarvan does get banned out, Nasus may be available if they choose not to ban that. What we did see from Alton in the previous game is they banned Malphite and Nasus as well as Zack. So all of them could be junglers and all of them could be targeted at Matraka. You can see that this time around, Aaron A is having a good discussion. Looks like he seems to be the man that's organizing the picks and bans. Definitely the discussion is coming from him. Whereas Wizards, I said it at the start, I said it at the game one, they looked so calm and collected, they looked ready for this. So this is another one of the situations. During the build-up to the show, we actually talked about how Alternate is a team, we know the players, we know where they've come from, we've seen their play styles, and you know, we know about them. Wizards, on the other hand, you've got this unknown element to them, and if they've done all their preparation, which it definitely looks like they have, they had a clear game plan in that match. They had a clear focus, and they pulled it off perfectly. Yeah. Oh, we'll see how it works. And as I mentioned, the Wizards are still looking pretty calm. Having a good discussion with the uh, admin there. There's Dave, just to the side of him. The admins are discussing, well, not too sure what they're discussing, whether they are going to have the blue or the red side, I don't know, maybe that's what it is. But as it stands, they had a, a graphic bug, apparently. So it, it does look like it was Mithy again who was missing, and, and it's obviously his machine that had the problems during the first game, so we will hopefully be resolving He didn't this have matter. any problems towards the end, though, because that no. Lulu glitter lance from range across yep. lanes was brilliant. Yeah, it was really, really great. That was when Tesla's Shen was, you know, chasing yeah. down for Ellen Lord, managed to get the shield, you know, the help picks were sitting on him, and, you know, extended the range of that glitter lance. So teams are just getting ready for this matchup. Remember, it is a best of three, so if alternate pick up this victory, we will be going to a decider game, and we have two more best of threes coming your way later today. Yeah, just to uh, keep us on our toes, of course, those matches will be happening as soon as this one concludes. So while there is a schedule down of times, of course, if there's two O's, things will go quicker. Or if there's hour-long epics, things will go slower. That is just the nature of the beast in terms of events. Of course, you can't schedule everything perfectly because you've no idea how long the games were going to be. If it was football and we knew it was going to be a 90-minute match, we could do that. But it isn't. This is esports, and it is currently really dominating, honestly. Esports is really kicking off right now. Yeah, it's absolutely awesome to be part of it. And, you know, especially now when you think about it, this is the LCS. We've got an amateur oh, team here. He's, he's got this. He's got this. It's great to see this, you know, a little bit of camera play from the new teams. This is, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is Wizards' first time on a big stage, a big Guys, tournament stage, repeat. in front of cameras, with the spotlights, uh, with an audience, uh, and with the two of us sitting talking over everything they do, people watching and judging every single move. And when you've got that amount of pressure and you can play that the way you did in that game one, you have to give props to the Wizards. They are an all-Spanish team and, you know, frankly, they've surprised many. Well, pressure's off them, honestly, right now. Pressure almost certainly is on alternate. And as you can see, it may well be a telling factor. They're clearly discussing picks, bans, see what they're going to do. We are a minute away before picks and bans get underway. So what are we thinking then? Let's go through the bans. What did we have last time, and what are we thinking will change? All right, so alternate band out, Malphite, Nasus, and Zack. All three could be... Uh, uh, 
junglers, and some of them you can put top lane as well. So I definitely feel like alternate feel that Tesla and Carbono are the, the strongest players. Over for Wizards, they have banded out Twisted Fate, Rumble, and Thresh. So, you know, top laner, mid laner, and support champion. And to be honest, they still got a lot of very powerful picks. I mean, they ran Shen, they ran Diana, they ran Varus, and Diana and Zed we've seen banned out by MOM through the entirety of their best of three. So, in terms of bans, I wouldn't be surprised to see the likes of TF and Shen being banned out. I would expect Alternate to ban Jarvan. If they don't plan on picking him, if, if they do plan on picking him, they'll leave some of the high priority picks to go through for that first round pick. So do we think Zach may sneak through this time around? It's a possibility. It's one of those situations where you, you need to prioritize your bans. And because you're on the opposite side, it means now the banning strategy is completely changed. Because Wizards have first pick, they can force uh, alternate's hand. They can say, well, we'll leave four champions that we think are, you know, OP open. We can leave Jav and Zach, Twisted Fate, Shen, and it's up to their opponents to ban out, you know, either a, a, a multitude of those or risk letting them be first picked. Wizards saying they're ready, so I'm guessing alternate will be ready, and good luck have fun exchange between the two teams, and things will get underway. So, picks and bans getting straight away. Twisted Fate, 100% banned out this entire tournament so far. Malphite also taken away once again from Alternate. They really do not want to let Wizards have that one. Rumble being removed, and Diana. These are quick fire bans here, Trevor. Yep, so Diana being removed, obviously they don't want Dragon playing that one. It does mean Zed is still available, so if, you know, uh, Wizards let the slide through, so do Alternate, you can expect it being picked up. Shen is still in the pool, as is Zack as is Nasus. Those are the ones that sort of, you know, were high priority in the previous game. Well, you'll see, it's definitely slowed things down because now they've realized they're like, ooh, what do we do? What do we do? What's who, the decision? Who do we let through? Oriana being taken away. I'm not sure whether that's completely required. I thought they shut Oriana down pretty well for Feral Lord there. Thresh is taken away. I believe Thresh has stayed at 100% banned as well here. And Zack has snuck through and looks like he's going to be the first pick. You are correct. Thresh has been banned in the entirety of all of our games thus far today. As we mentioned, Zack was let through. So is Nasus. Now, Nasus was banned out in the previous game, but it was alternate that banned him out against the Wizard. So we'll see whether or not they want to pick him up. Jarvan is still available as well as Zed. So those are the high priority picks. We've still got the likes of Lulu and Varus and, and Sona in there who we've seen a couple times today. So the question is now from Alternate, do they want to lock in Shen, Varus, Shen, Nasus? I would expect a Shen in there just because of the power that he offers. Instead, they're going to go complete opposite and go Zed, Sona. Zed locked in again, so Kerb really wanting that one. Or will we see it in the hands of Aaron Ayo for Elmore this time around? Jerry wanted that Sonar as well. We're probably going to see a Lulu Varus countering that, I believe. So, my, yeah, my question is now, you know, you have Lulu Varus available. You have Shen still, you know, he's there. And if you're going to give him back to Tesla, you can then put Zack in the jungle, for example, or even give him to Dragon in the mid. We've seen Zack all over the place based on the different leagues. So, alternate feeling that, you know, Zed is definitely the pick they wanted. I'm going to be very honest and say Kerb didn't have any impact on that previous game at all. Mm. He did get some damage down towards the end, but it was mostly because of the uh, shockwave from Ferenin Lord. But remember, Shen is available, so Tesla yeah. could just go and pick that's, that up That's again. what I'm expecting. Yeah, and he'll just... Tesla, you, th you think Shen Varus? It's gotta be. Oh no, we're going for Nasus instead, so they're gonna leave so no Shen crystal ball, right. I'm gonna put the crystal ball down before I hurt somebody with it. <laughs> but right now, I'm gonna go with Varus. So, uh, Varus and Nasus. Nasus, like we mentioned, it was actually banned out in the earlier games. So, uh, you've got some interchangeability now between the likes of Zack and Nasus, and we'll Holy see how that plays moly. out. We have the Blind Monk. Okay, so that's gonna be given to Aranea, and the last time he ran this on land, on a big land, uh, he was losing to Fnatic uh, at the Warsaw Qualifiers. It was the jungler that he ran in that particular matchup, and I distinctly remember trying to get some very aggressive uh, Wraith Camp to Tower Dives. You put a ward down, you know, jump over to the ward, and then Dragon's Rage kick Pekka into the lane. It didn't always work out, but it was very exciting to watch. We'll see whether it works out this time around. That is a ballsy play, though, coming out. Alistair potentially going to get picked up here. We'll see whether Mithy wants to take that, or whether we'll go back with Lulu. And Elise was available as well, so you could even run Elise support if they wanted to. Mid laner, I feel, is still free for Wizards, and I think this is what the talking point is now. Who do we want to put in this middle lane? Who do we want to, you know, give them to? With oh, this being locked Zach. in, so mid that's going to be Zach mid. Yeah, we'll see whether it gets locked in or not. They could change it. Lulu does look like it's going to get selected alongside Varus, so that would mean Renekton will be in the hands of Tesla. 
And that means Zack is in the hands of Dragon. I immediately like the composition here from Wizards. They've got such a beefy, tanky frontline. Nasus and Renekton, the brothers, are going to be throwing on their ultimates, get all that HP, have the damage per second around them based on magic damage. Then you're going to have Zack bouncing around absolutely everybody. And, you know, uh, Matroka's Varish just untouched in the back line. With are you being locked in, that will help in terms of avoiding some of the damage. But unless Ferenilor gets off to a flyer of a start, he's not going to be able to burst down and kill Zack, Nasus, and Renekton, especially with Zack's passive. Well, we'll see how it works out for the Wizards course with that 1-0 lead over Alton. And what are we seeing for these two team compositions overall? I'm seeing so much tankiness, so much damage and control from the Wizards. I fear for Alternate right now. So this, there's one thing that will play into Alternate's favor in these team fights. If Creatin does go for that same Elder Lizard into Gauntlet build, he's going to be able to kite Nasus, Renekton and Zack perfectly. It's the way the build was designed to get around this tanky bruiser survivability. You know, keep you know, landing those dots and staying mobile. What it does also mean is you've got all the movement from Zed, from Lee, from Ari. And if Alternate get caught in the same place, they will die. If they avoid the chain of corruption and you know the, the stuns from their opponents, the slows, they will be able to you know kite, and that's going to be the difference in these team fights. Well, there is the wizards; they are ready and waiting to go. Game is about to launch, as you can see. No last-minute super secret changes, and no teleports either taken by either team. We did see Charu with a number of teleports last time around. Zarane on your screen, along with the rest of alternate. They are ready and waiting to go. As are you guys at home, I'm sure tuning in by the many thousands. It's good to have you here once again, of course. We went through the drama of the playoffs last weekend. If you missed that, you can, of course, catch it over at lollysports.com. See who picked up the wins in both Europe and North America. Both were absolute excellent finals, so I highly recommend watching both of them if you missed any of those matches. But right now, it's the summer promotion. Who will get in towards the LCS for the summer series, which is obviously, of course, the big important one that many of the teams are aware of. That is how you get to that World Finals later on in the year. As it is, it's alternate. They are 1-0 down against the Wizards. The winner of this game will be facing off against the Giants. The question is, who will it be? Will the Giants take it 2-0? Will they lock out the series? Or will alternate put a crimp in the works and manage to pick up a game to take it 1-1? They are the red side, as you can see, and the Wizards as the blue side. Some would say the advantage is with the blue, but honestly, stats proves otherwise it's very much even across the board i think it's like 51 percent and 49 percent over all games played it's very close it is very close and it's something that we actually seen you know mirrored during the playoffs last weekend we've seen how many blue side victories there were leading up to the grand final where it was all about the red team and it was just red team victories over and over right now though i'll still be looking to try and Buck the trend of blue side victories for uh, 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 this morning, with the exception of the previous game. And right now, it's a defensive start from all teams. Getting some early wards down, and we may see some lane swaps coming in right now. So we're just waiting to get things underway. It doesn't look like there's going to be any level one play. You can see oh, at the top, it is going to be Kerp versus Tesla once again. We'll see how that battle works out from this time around with Renekton down the bottom lane, of course. It also, also Vara sitting in that tri bush. They are ready and waiting a blue buff. And looking like Carbono this time around on Nasus. So successful on. Jarvan in the first game, we'll see how it works out for him. He has taken the dog and he's walking like an Egyptian. <laughs> uh, this particular matchup is going to be very interesting, especially that top lane of Renekton versus Zed. Because once they both hit six, Kerp is going to be able to all in with that death mark. And Renekton's just going to throw in his ultimate Dominus, get that HP and effectively survive the burst. So I'd like to see exactly how they play this laning phase out. Because of course, Renekton has that sustain, which Kerp does not. And that's obviously going to play into his favor. Just to remind all the viewers, this is 3.5 balance this is just before the 3.6 meaning you can stack those hp parts all the way up to nine if you would like to yeah and of course lissandra is not available and, yes uh, correct because she came just the other night and won't be available in the lcs until the next season so as it stands right now alternate are going to be taking blue it will be on air on lee sin lee sin the champion we've not seen in the jungle for many many weeks right now i do believe i remember seeing who played it? One person played it in Europe LCS. I can't think who it was. So Leeson has been played over in the Korean OGN leagues yes, a number yes. of times as well, and is actually a very popular pick with you know some of the teams running through there. So it's interesting to see it falling out of favor here, but still working well on that side of the pond. 
In this mid lane, though, Zach versus Ari. This is another matchup that we have not seen yet at all. And it's going to be an interesting one to keep tabs off, as, especially as they start getting up to the higher levels. I think it's a case of if Diamond Prox stops playing Lee Sin, everybody goes, whoa, wait a minute. There's a problem here. The only person I think that really does keep running is Insect in Korea. That's what you're talking about, OGN. And it's... Yeah, yeah, correct. And so... actually, Diamond says he's better, better at him than that. We'll see how it works out, though, when they do finally meet each other over in the All-Stars. As it stands... It is going to be a hail of arrows landing on alternate, and again, all lanes being bullied and pushed by Wizards. And look at the numbers in that bottom lane, 15 to 6 as far as CS was concerned, and you've seen how low Creatine and Jay Re were. Up in this top lane, there's a very, very big wave in front of Kerb, so that'll explain the number deficit right now, and we'll see how well he can CS, but Arnea is moving up. This is going to be a double ninja setup to try and kill the crocodile. Mama wants a pair of boots, and will they get it? No, he's not, because he missed it, and he doesn't land it, and that means Tessa is just going to walk away without burning anything at all. He smelt that one coming a mile off. Just use that uh, slice and dice from Renekton to get a little bit of extra distance, and like you said, if you don't land that sonic wave, you're not going to be able to chase him down and apply any more of the CC. But the mid lane, Dragon on Zack versus Frenin Lord's Ari. If Ari does get the ability to kill, you know, Dragon Zack, and he's in the right position, his passive is going to pop. He's just going to reform as that gelatinous ooze comes closer together. And obviously, you know, Frenelon's going to have to try and reburst him down all over again. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this one works out. We did see Alex Sitch didn't really run it in the mid, though. He went up the top yeah. lane. So this is effectively the first mid laner we've seen in the European LCS. But it's not technically the LCS yet because these guys are fighting to qualify. The Summer Promotion Tournament is the official title. And we'll see which team manages to make it through to face off against the Giants in that best of five tomorrow. Right now, uh, that early advantage that was in the favor of Wizards has been evened out. And there's been no first bloods either from either team. So, you know, that early, early push, it has been balanced out. And Arana, again, looking to set something up, but his lane is pretty heavily pushed. So he's going to have to go very, very deep if he wants to make something happen. We'll see how deep he does go. He's going to see Jay Rees trying his best to poke out Miffy from this one. Miffy, of course, in that last exchange, worked out very, very, very well for him. And this time we do see the pink ward put down, which immediately stops RNA in his tracks. So I wonder if he sniffed that one out. In which case, it seems to be the countering of Wizard so far. Knowing when those ganks are coming, seems to be perfect. So Jay Rees was sitting in the bush. You would have seen the ward going down. And with that very big wave pushing against the Wizard's, you know, tow uh, uh, tower line, it's not a dive that you can do at level 3 or level 4, which is what this entire bottom lane was. So RNA does decide to back away. He's fallen a little bit behind the pace as far as CS is concerned. But at least he is looking for opportunities. He just hasn't, you know, found them out yet. Take a look at uh, Carbona's position with Nass as he was moving towards the river thinking about coming down towards the bottom and he's now looking to set up his first gank but he doesn't have blue nor does he have red he's coming a long way around the back here and for Lord hasn't got ah oh, yes he has he's, no he hasn't hit six he's not far from it but he's dead down the bottom they're going to dive in towards Mithy Mithy might get caught out here will be first but goes down there now in towards the mid lane they're going to go in towards Dragon Dragon of course will have that passive let's see if Carbona can defend him Arane is going to get taken he manages to squish one squishes two for Lord manages to take another they do get the kill Arane nearly paying for him with his life but it is more importantly 2-0 to zero for alternate. Very well played, but they're fighting up in the top lane. They're going in, and Kerb is actually going back and forward with this one. It's a good exchange from Tesla. Does manage to rip a big chunk of health off Kerb, and he has a giant creep wave with him. So in the bottom lane, First Blood was picked up by Creatin with the help of Jay Ree. They managed to get the power cord down, get a lot of good poke into Mithy, and then follow it up with the Ignite and immediately chase him down. In the mid lane, that gang from Carbono, it actually countered. It, you know, it ended up working against him because RNL was nearby, was able to jump in there. That gives Ultimate a very good advantage right now. Two to zero up, and showing that, you know, they can actually trade with Wizards, they bounce back from that first game defeat. So, let's have a look across the lanes. You can see a big gap building already from Tesla in this top lane. Just like before, dominating it out here. This time around with Renekton, of course. In that mid lane, pretty even between the two, of course, that assist going down for Unlord. We do see Dragon launching away and Carbone was passing by. He's like, really, guy? I'm right here and you're taking the rates right from me. Of course, communication will have gone between the two and they will have accepted that. Down the bottom lane, actually a much even fight this time around between Matraco and Kraton. Of course, Kraton did pick up that kill early on against Miffy. Yeah, let's actually be honest about that. It, it's, it, it's, it's a role reversal. This time around, Kraton and Jayree, they won that engagement. We see in the previous game just how they were being shut down. Now, in the middle lane, Dragon's in trouble. He's been charmed. He lands the charm. Remember, he doesn't have that passive available. He's going to use his ultimate. Let's bounce to get away from that one. But Dragon having to burn a number of 
abilities to get out of that. So he manages to bounce himself out of a bad situation. And something we didn't point out either is his summoner spells. He went with barrier and ignite. So he doesn't have any sort of movement, uh, uh, you know, like a flash, for example. Going to be relying on that elastic slingshot. Oh, very well played. Blue buff is being picked up by Forerunner Lord right now. We're up in the top lane. Busy fighting. That's ultimate burn from both of them, actually. Yeah, both of them obviously had an engagement. We didn't quite catch a view off, but Tesla, you can see his hit points did go down. Kerp seemed to work that one very well towards him, but is he going to stick around? Nope. Not going to hang around in that bush. Doesn't want to go for another tango with him. He has got full rage, though, so maybe if Kerp goes a little bit closer, he's going to be in trouble. So we'll see how well he does manage to, you know, jump in there. He's maxing out that Cold the Meek. Gonna be able to heal himself up. So, you know, both red pots burned and ultimates no kill going down. It definitely was the uh, 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 dominance from Renekton that saves him from the death mark. So well played there. Right now, Carbono has started off blue buff, and it doesn't look like Dragon's actually gonna come up here to pick that one up. So blue buff is gonna be given away to Nasus there, which is an interesting one. Obviously, Zach not being mana dependent, he's not gonna take it. Yeah, and of course, zero items on Kurt right now because he did use that red pot. You can see it glowing on him, as is Tesla Land. But we do see both both junglers coming up towards there. Carbono and RNA. Car Carbono being kicked in towards the turret there. But it's going to be Kurt that's taken down very low. The Ignite goes down. One more hit from Tesla. Should be enough. The Ignite's ticking. It will take him down. The shield coming out from RNA and not quite quick enough. And it's going to be the kill for Tesla. For Ellen Lord's coming up from the river, though. He's got his ultimate available if he decides to go in. Decides not to. And, you know, that particular engagement, that was just Tesla. 1v1 in Kerb. Without their ultimates, he was able to win that fight completely. Oh, fantastic work there. And that does mean it's going to be a two for one to alternate with that advantage. But Tesla now picking up a big chunk towards that Sunfire Cape as well as the boots there. That is going to make him a much stronger, tankier target in that top lane. Kurt, meanwhile, he goes back, gets him that Bilge Water Cutlass and the Cloth Armor. So we'll see how, you know, they're going to decide to level this up right now. That Cloth Armor for Zed is an interesting pickup. He's afraid of the damage that Renekton's putting down. And I want to see what he builds into if he's going to go for the likes of a Ninja Tabai. So it'll be, it'll be one to watch. In terms of the bottom lane, you can see that Creatine is definitely going to go for that Spirit of the Elder Lizard build once again. And as we pointed out, as long as they can draw out these team fights, the kiting power is going to be very, very strong. Yeah, it looks like the Dragon is going to go across to alternate. You can see they're starting off, but Dragon's going about to launch himself in there. Yes, he will. There's the rest of the team. Chain of Corruption didn't quite land, though. You can see the Charm just missing out there. Carbono does come in, puts the Wither down on towards Aranea, but it's going to be Mithy there. Yes, caught out. Mithy does go down. He did manage to turn around and use his Wild Growth just in the meantime, but it's going to be also Carbono going down. And now Dragon's in trouble. Alternate turning this one heavily in their favor. It's going to be a three for zero once they catch down Dragon and the Dragon itself. So four kills in that little moment such good play coming out of them being able to counter every single one of their opponents even though each of the abilities land alternate have turned the pressure on and this is now a role reversal this is a complete opposite to what we've seen from the previous game and they are just winning out in every single engagement making the right choices at the right time and I may have spoke too soon, Alternate, they're not going down without a fight. You could just say they've got Double Dragon right there, but as it stands, Tessa is going to try and take down that top turret. And that will try and even the gold as little as they can, but still not going to equal things out. You can see it's a 2,000 gold advantage for Alternate. And they are picking up the kills on essentially the right people, although you could argue maybe the jungler isn't the right person. So a jungler like Lee, it can work out very well because he is a snowball jungler. And if you look at the item that he's picked up, he's gone for the Sightstone first. Little Lance has caught out Creatin, but without no Chain of Corruption, it doesn't look like going to carry on chasing. And, you know, with that Sidestone, it's going to allow him to put more wards down. And with the Lee Sin, who can, you know, hop, skip, and jump to each of those wards, it's obviously going to give him all that additional mobility as well, which you cannot discount in these upcoming fights. That's bottom lane. It's working very well for Creatin, considering how much focus they had in that first game around. And the pause comes out. It is... Uh, Wizards that have called the pause, it's Mithy once again that there's actually uh, called the pause here, I believe. Although we are seeing alternate being talked to, they've been told you cannot discuss the game in between. Keep your headsets on because then you listen to what we're saying and we need to make sure that we can't give them. So they're actually going to replace uh, Mithy's machine, I believe, which means we are going to be cutting across towards an interview with uh, Shox, I believe. We're just waiting to see if she can set ourselves up. We are seeing, of course, the two teams with the headsets off. So now we're going to be really careful what we say because they shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, it's exactly something we need to be very careful of right now as, of course, they are sitting in the studio with the audience. We'll be able to hear what we're saying. It's a very good game that we've seen from Alternate right now. They've bounced back from the previous matchup where uh, 
uh, you know, they, they were crushed, let's be honest. And right now, they've come out swinging. They've been able to put a very good show on. And like we said, as long as they can stay ahead of this very tanky uh, uh, Wizards lineup, they can hold the lead. Yeah, interesting you can see, actually, playing in windowed mode. A number of players actually do do that. It's just really simply playing how they're used to playing it at home. It's, you see a lot of the... Uh, the Gambit ga gamers playing exactly that same way. They'll keep it in a small screen. It's just whatever they're used to at home, whatever they've been used to. I believe Dyrus obviously famously used to run it very much windowed mode and lock camera. He doesn't do it anymore. He's obviously got used to playing in similar situations. But it's something that he's done, something that we've seen a lot of players doing, honestly. Yeah, it just comes down to preference. That's like what we were saying earlier, how uh, we believe Kerb actually used to run a trackball mouse, you know? So. If, if you, you're comfortable with your setup, with your hardware, with your viewing settings, it's, it's what you, you play a lot of. And uh, it's something that you've actually heard a lot of people talking about, the ARAM queue now, how the ground is a little bit lower, so your field of view is wider. And people on Reddit are like, well, my skill shots feel different now, because the, the angle's slightly different is from it, what we used to Is it the ground that's lower, or is it the camera is that's lower. No, the ground has been <laughs> lowered. So your field of view is the same. You're not zoomed in, because the ground's been dropped. How that's technically different, I'm not quite sure. But <laughs> according to informed. yes, according to Dev Track and Red Posts on the, the forums, that is the, the legitimate answer. And uh, yeah, it, it makes me giggle a little bit. But it is just different, you know. And it's just it's adapting to those changes and making sure that you can play at your top, your best level anywhere you go. It's funny that you mention that because you know we've talked about it already off air before when we've been playing. And how many people were requested that the camera does get panned out a little bit more in Summoner's Rift? And then once they do it in Howling Abyss, suddenly it's like, oh my god, this is such a big change. <laughs> exactly. What have you done? Right, exactly. please. <laughs> right, please, all the damn time. It's just a matter of how that goes, to be honest. But uh, yeah, so as we said, we are busy changing Mithy's PC. He has been having graphics-related problems, FPS issues. We do have replaced some PCs on hand. We will get that back as quickly as possible. I believe Shox is looking for an interview candidate. But until we I have... wonder who she's hunting down. I wonder if she's running around the studio trying to find someone. She probably You, is. you come here. You, yes. you come you, and come talk on. to me. You, you need to talk, and when they say no, but you have to. How, <laughs> how Lee, his voice is going. How can you say no to shocks when she's asking you for an interview? Who knows? Oh, it turns out we actually do have an interview. Yeah, well, apparently we do. That was pretty much yelled in my ear. We're ready. <laughs> so let's see what shocks has got. I have found Hosan. Thank you very much, D-Man. Um, of course, very relevant, as the Dragonborns will be playing here tomorrow for a chance to save their spot in the LCS. So, Hosan, how are you doing and how are the Dragonborns doing today? We're doing well. We had a boot camp. We are now in the Germany. We were at the gaming house. We were resting. Well, we don't have anything to play on anyway. <laughs> but we're doing well and we feel confident about how we're going to play tomorrow. Yeah, the studio is, of course, filled with those teams who also want a spot in the LCS. And the team you will be facing tomorrow is Meet your makers. Have you seen their match and what did you think? We've seen it at home. Uh, I think it was pretty close. Like Dexter could have taken it, but something happened. I mean, it was really close. We have to say it was a good game. Both teams played really well and just the better one. They were heavy favorites coming into this weekend. Do you feel a little more at ease now that they weren't able to steamroll over Dexter? I feel more confident. I mean, we were pretty confident at the, to begin with. But I think it's better for us that we know that they were close, that we don't have anything to fear for, that there is not such a, much, such a big difference uh, in the skill of the two teams. And yeah, I think we can win. How important do you think it will be that you have 10 weeks of LCS under your belt? You know the studio in and out. You have all that experience. How important will that be? I guess we will be less stressed, of course. We know the people here. We feel more comfortable with that. And it's better that we've played LCS. We had the better practice with good teams We're going full serious against us. So yeah, I think we have a little advantage over there. And it just adds up for our victory. How important is uh, the mental games? Because we, uh, when I interviewed you a couple of weeks ago, you said, ah, we threw 3 0 them once. We're going to do it again. Do you like doing that, like kind of teasing the opponent beforehand? Well, it was 2-0, though. Oh, 2-0, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, but no, I don't really rely on the men mental games. It's like, okay to do it. If you don't overdo it, of course. Like, you have to have respect for your opponents. But, yeah, I just hope to crush them with skill, not mental games. 
That's very nice, of course. Now, uh, the game that's going on right now is alternate. Kind of a surprising result for a lot of people in that first game, as um, Wizard just totally stomped them in that first game. It's going better now. What are your thoughts about those two teams up against each other? We've seen that the first game was clear stomp. Uh, it was like 20k advantage on giant... Um, <laughs> There's Spanish as well. Yes. Yeah, on Wizards uh, in like 30 minutes, and it kept going. They just took everything and won the game. But right now we can see that Alternate got the same, started to do the same this game. So it might become that they will do the same as they did in the first game. And the third game will be really close. It will be fun to watch, I guess. Because, yeah, it will be the same as with MOM 1 1 and really close to the dream. And what about the other teams here? Are there teams that you think, hmm, actually, they really deserve a spot in the LCS, and of the other LCS teams, who do you think will go out? Well, of course, I would favoritize the current LCS teams because I know them, I'm friends with them. But out of the amateur teams, like, I, I know a few people, few are good, few are bad in my eyes, I don't know others. Like, we had Extinct as our sub, he played really well, so I think he's good at it. We've played with Nexus lately, they haven't been doing bad either. And I think everyone has pretty good chances. It's only best of three, so yeah. I guess everyone can win if they pull some strategy or anything. Absolutely, but tomorrow you'll be having a best of five against Meteor Makers, so unbelievably important. How is the pressure getting to you? Because, of course, if you lose it, you are no longer a professional player in the LCS, something you have been for the last 10 weeks, and which I can imagine was pretty amazing. Yeah, LCS was pretty amazing. Much traveling, like fun, new people, really nice people, of course. ESL, Riot, and the players itself. But, yeah, it will be really sad to leave this place, I guess, because we got used to it, we really like it. Uh, of course, it's our dream job as well. So, yeah, I would not like to think about losing yet. So I guess I will leave it till we lose, if we lose, of course. Finally, maybe um, the other AD carry on Meteor Makers is Mackler, who has been very impressive. How do you compare your strengths to his? I don't know. I mean, I'm probably the most aggressive one. I haven't really watched many MIM games, but... I know that they aren't as aggressive as I am. Uh, Libic is a bit more aggressive than Magner, I think, but that's about it. Uh, I guess we can do it on the bottom, as we always did, 2v2. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, let's get back to our commentators. I do believe that we'll be able to get back into the game soon.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So game two going to be getting underway again shortly. Of course, there was just a quick pause there. We're replacing Mythy's machine. So these things happen. This is what esports is based on. If the computers aren't working, you can't do a lot. No, unfortunately not. So he's just going to be reconfiguring his settings, making sure that he's got all of his key bindings and everything set up on the new rig. And we will be getting this game unpaused very, very shortly. And we can carry on with game two, a game which Alternate have been in control of from the start. Apparently he's going to be reconnected. So let's remind you of the game so far. Game one was a very one-sided match. 25,000 gold advantage towards the end of it for Wizards. They went 1-0 to zero up in a completely dominant performance. Game 2, though, underway right now, is currently 5-1 to alternate in kills. And that actually is a 2,000 gold lead. Only... 11 and a half minutes in this game. That's a pretty big lead. It is a pretty big lead. The one you know thing that does play into Wizards' favor is they do have the first and only tower of the game so mm. far. So we'll see whether or not that opens up the map to them and allows them to roam and make some plays. But at the moment, Alternate have been doing really good. The team fights have been good. They were strong in their laning phases, and they didn't make the same mistakes that they did in the previous matchup. So after this break, how do you think that's going to affect either player? I mean, they're going to all be sat there. They've all had their headsets on. None of them have been able to talk, although obviously Mithy had to take his headset off to yeah, change it to around. Change the PC. Alternate saying they are ready, and uh, we're just waiting so, for Wizards to sort themselves out. Obviously, he needs to just configure a few little things, make sure he's ready to go. This is something that's going to play into Alternate's favor a little bit. Mm. Because their players have all literally traveled around the world to play in tournaments, they will have experienced pauses. They will have gone through these sorts of situations or similar ones in the past. So, Wizards, this may be a very first time that they've had to stop in the middle of a game, change an entire PC, and get back into it. So the game is unpaused. We will be getting that up on your screen very, very shortly. And at the moment, it's just Farm Central right now. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are underway, and straight away, Motroko is attacking the turret. He wants to get some damage on there while the Creaton is away from lane. He is about to return, so don't worry, he will clear that out. So let's take stock of the situation. Let's look down the lanes. You can see a huge advantage for Tesla right now in that top lane over Kerb. It is gigantic right now. Almost 30 CS built up. You can see he's gone back to bite. Of course, that does mean Kerb will be getting some CS right now. He will catch back in there. But more importantly, the tower, the first tower of the game did go down, and they are going to dive on towards him. Matraco, he got it covered. So we didn't even see the Dragon's Rage kick coming up from Aronair. They did force out the Chain of Corruption, but a good gank attempt. Nevertheless, Aronair tried to run forward and actually kick him backwards, wasn't able to make it work. And talking about that top lane advantage that Tesla has, we're going to see a similar situation to the previous game where Kerp is not going to be able to really kill Tesla out because of that early Sunfire cape, but Kerp's focus is always going to be on Matraco's Varus and just trying to pop him in team fights. And look at his warden. Look what he's just done. He's put himself a triangle down around that top jungle. He wants to absolutely bully Kerp out of this game. He's got himself a giant creep wave that he's going to chug down. And that is going to be happy times farming for him. And he's quite happy to just keep on pushing that one. Meanwhile, the blue buff, and that's going to be given across, of course, to Pharrell Lord in just a moment. He's going to come over and pick that one up. Meanwhile, the blue buff for Wizards, which way would that be going? Because does Dragon need that? Not really. Tip of the cooldowns, maybe. But I think, I think Carbona is probably just going to keep on farming up. So Carbona will probably keep that up for as long as the laning phase will continue. Oh, there's the crescendo. And he didn't go straight too into it. That's going to be a true shot. It does manage to get the wild growth to keep Matroko alive. And he's going to be running away from this one. Mithy now will be the target. Can they get him towards wow. him? But immediately the wither comes out from Carbono and they force him away. And Matroko, well, survives once again. I cannot believe they managed to get away with that one using the wild growth as well as the movement speed that Lulu's going to offer, chasing him away, getting him to safety. So great, great play from the Wizards to get him out of there. And talking about Matraco, I imagine once we get to the mid to late game, it'll be his blue buff. Right now, though, Tesla with those wards that he put down earlier, that triangle is going to give him full vision, allow him to maybe even bully out RNA in this jungle. Yeah, you can see they tried to try and pick up that red buff while RNA was gone. For Lord also came up to try and help him out there. But Dragon looks like he's going to cover him off mid. So at the moment, though, we'll see how well he can fend off that pressure. Aranea, he started off his red buff, will be able to secure that very, very quickly and safely, and obviously going to carry on with his uh, uh, jungle path. But with regards to Dragon in the mid lane, he's behind on CS to Forenden Lord when he was winning in the previous matchup. So Carbona will be picking up that blue buff in the mid lane. Meanwhile, Zach, he's on that right. So in terms of farming between these two, Forenden Lord is a little bit ahead of Dragon right now. He's putting pressure on that too, and you can see the damage that he's already got down oh, there. The charm. the charm does land on Carpono, and immediately Aronay was there. Yeah, comes Renekton. Shield him off. He's going to see he's coming around. It's going to be Tesla going in. He tries to 
focus on towards for Lord, but immediately gets kicked away. RNA is gonna go down here, or is he? Is the Ignite finally finishes him off? But you can see Tesla taking low. Doesn't matter, it's gonna be for Lord that picks that kill up. Actually, Tyler Light's curve. There's gonna be the blobs going down of Dragon, and that will be picked up. Who they're gonna give it to? They're gonna give it to Curb. So two for one reaction at the end of the day, and the burst damage that comes out of both Zed and Ari was too much for that, you know, for the team to handle. And that was something that we talked about in the build-up, that if the tanky team could get focused down, then Alton will be able to keep control of this game. So at the moment, they extend that gold lead even further, and they hold a five-kill advantage over their opponents. Could we see a third match? It is, of course, Wizards that are one to zero up in this game. Alternate putting the pressure on them here as the red team working much better for them this time around once they finally got those picks and bans through. As it stands, you can see for Lord one zero four now for Ferran Lord. That's a much better start than previous game. It was zero two, I believe, at one point. Meanwhile, zero three one for Zack in mid, which is Dragon. Much more important, but on a champion like Ari, he's gonna need to maintain that lead and make sure he doesn't slip up and fall behind. Because Ari's gonna, you know, does have the ability to deal a lot of damage to a lot of targets, but specializes on, you know, really singling one target out with the charm, with the likes of a DFG, and then blowing everything on them. That's what really what he's going to need to keep doing. Pink Ward is down for Alton, and they're just going to clear out Dragon, which will be respawning in 20 seconds. And of course, those two kills that were just given across to Kerb does mean the fact that he is going to be stronger in that top lane now. Now, Tesla is not going to be as confident in pulling him out. He did put those three wards down in that jungle. Not one of them really came to any use because they've timed out and he didn't really get a great deal from it. No, so he tried to steal the red buff. That didn't work out successfully. Tried to come up behind and set up a gank. That didn't work. And right now, Fabana is going to eat. Uh, a little shot there from Aranea, the leap comes up, the elastic slingshot, and Renekton is there, but this fight, luckily Alton are able to back away quickly enough. And more importantly, the, the mobility that Alternate have, you saw it there, Aranea, obviously he can uh, iron will to someone, he can defend across there. Ari, the Frel Lord, can just jump away from these fights. Zed obviously uses Living Shadow as well. Ezreal, he can Arcane Shift. Sona's going to be the really only solid target in there. We do see actually... They're gonna, Wizards are going to keep on pushing on towards this turret while Alternate take the Dragon. There's the Dragon going down. That's going to stretch that gold lead. It's now 4,000 in advantage to Alternate. And you have to give really good credit to Ferenin Lord there. He managed to actually fend off that push in the middle lane. He showed himself in lane, applied some damage, and pretty much drew their focus a little bit, which sort of made them doubt, is the rest of the, the, the team coming up? Are, are Alternate going to dive? And at the end, they managed to pick up the Dragon uncontested. So that is the second Dragon of the game, if I recall correctly. And that is owing to the gold lead. Look at Ferenin Lord position and I think Wizards are well aware of this there is a ward there that they would have seen him walking over and you can tell by just how, how defensive they're playing in the bottom half of the jungle yeah they saw him leaving that mid lane pinged it the moment he was going away does back off covers him off they did also pull four members down there but it does mean that the bottom lane we do have our layer in there it's going to be the jungler of Carbono if he goes back it's going to give me a three to two advantage for alternate pushing on this bottom lane and of course, don't forget the mobility that Ferelnord has. He can zip around that map if he so requires, but they're not going to go for it. And it's going to be Matroco poking back, and they are going to back and buy. Yeah, so Arana is, is doubting. Do they know I'm here? Is there vision, etc.? He, he managed to avoid the piercing arrow. It's not going to make too much of a difference at the end. He's just going to step into the lane, clear out the wave with the rest of his team, and obviously force down the tower. So well played by Alternate right now to try and get their first tower of the game off the picking of the dragons. Habana is just going to stick around, try to pick up as much CS as possible before he makes a safe and speedy exit. So we do see, again, Tesla off farming that top lane. This is a split push style that we've seen many times in the LCS across many, many games in every other league. It works well, and it works very strongly for Wizards in the last game. Let's see if he can work from again this time around. For Lord's going to pick up that blue buff. And that's something he's been able to keep hold of the entire time this time around. Remembering game one, that mistake that Aranea made, or one of them yep. made, Where one Elise last tick, ended up picking it up. And that really did make them pay, especially Tesla getting poked there. Being caught by that ward and for Eleanor tracking him through, forcing him through towards the Baron pit. Tesla playing very confident right now. That's the second or third time that we've actually seen him running around the jungle, taking a bunch of wards and just... Putting it down, getting as much vision in and around that red buff as possible. You can see they've actually double stacked the ward near that red bush, which is uh, not ideal, but I think one of them will tie up shortly. And it's just, it tells you how confident Tesla is at, you know, his Renekton and at playing against Alton. He's not afraid of them. He's not afraid to invade, to get the vision down and to effectively challenge them. Say, right, come and fight me. Because if they do, if he pulls numbers towards him, the rest of his teammate can force objectives and try to force down other towers. 
Speaking of force and objectives, they're going straight across towards that blue buff and also they're going to steal this one away. It's not going to be as a crippling move as you would normally have if there was an AP mid player in there, but it will take that experience, that cooldowns away from Carbono. So that's something's going to play into his favor, especially now in this, you know, sort of still quasi laning phase with only three towers down we still haven't seen very big engagements in and around the dragon pits we haven't seen big you know 4v4 5v5s right now but once that blue buff comes back up i expect the focus to be on matroco giving it to the like of varus who's just going to spam out those piercing arrows all day long friend and lord looking to find a straggler in the bottom lane with that void staff completed he'll hit particularly hard and i imagine this need to see large rod would probably become a dfg yeah, we'll see how that works out for him. Of course, he has been much more successful in this game this time around. So, question for you, as they have a little poke back and forward here. Who is going to be the stronger? We're at the 20-minute mark. Ooh, I tell a lie. They're going to go in towards Tessa. He's going to have to flash away from this one. Does manage to get the second slice of dice across and successfully avoids the damage. But, but it does mean that Mithy plus has to use his wild growth. Is it going to be enough? Will he be able to flash away in time? No, he won't. He's going to go down to Pharrell Lord. And now the charm lands on towards Dragon. Uses the ultimate. Burns half his hit points down. Tessa now closing in on him. Pops his ultimate. He's going to go slice and dice across on towards Pharrell Lord. Is it going to be a mistake? You bet your life it is. Because the crescendo from Jerry takes him down and now the death mark is on dragon that's gonna pop it's not gonna do the damage you'd like so at the moment that while they're doing that the bottom lane's being pushed they put some free damage onto carbono and matroco is trying to get the turret down which he has just finished off trading two kills for a tower not quite sure it's worth it at the end of the day but they do give themselves a lot of gold and alternate are now pushing the top lane they're gonna keep the pressure on towards that top lane and the middle lane as well so where are they gonna push towards you can see for unload he's starting to burn down both inner turrets can put in a good amount of damage down there but the minions were wiped out they're not going to be able to get it yes they are the top in a turret so he definitely was worth it and now Carbano. they're turning on towards Carbano they land the charm that's going to be Carbano going down has to use his ultimate but it's not going to be enough for Unlord picks up another kill so alternate extend that kill lead to eight kills in the advantage four towers to two the glitter lance catches out Ezreal but there's no one else to back them up and without let's bounce available I don't anticipate Dragon really throwing himself to the wolves as it were Right now, Arane has decided to split push himself, and he's moved down to that bottom lane. Well, we're seeing, really, from both these games, once one team gets an advantage, they are crucifying the opposition, and it seems to be working very well for alternate now. 10 to 2 up in kills, and an 8,000 gold lead just 22 minutes into this game. 4 to 2 in turrets. They have all the advantages stacking up against them. How are Wizards going to react? They will put themselves in a fantastic position in the first game. How will they respond with their backs against the wall? So what we see now, while they're under all the pressure from alternate is they're making individual mistakes they're being caught out one by one they're running into situations where they really shouldn't be like for example where tesla tried to pick a fight with foreign lord in the jungle previously he was expecting dragon to leap onto him with an elastic uh, slingshot and it didn't happen so he ended up throwing him throwing his life away then carbono was caught under the tower they cannot afford to get caught out like that and keep giving away more and more gold. Oh, and speaking of people getting caught out, Tesla is well away. He doesn't have a turret. There's no way he's going to be able to escape this one. And it's going to be down to for Unlord and Kerb claps in on him. They've played together for so, so long. They're going to lay the damage down. Charm has said the charm hasn't been thrown out just yet. There it is. There's the charm. They turn around. It's Kerb that picks up yet another kill. 3-1-2 now on Zed. Dragon is just spawning. Chain of Corruption lands on towards Jay Reed. Can they follow it through? No. Great Dragon flash. jumps in and he flashes straight out from it. So well played by Jay Ree. Not only that, now the fight's on. There's a crescendo. Crescendo went across. Didn't really land in the right target, but they're going to keep on the pressure on towards Wizard. We do see Kerb getting out towards Dragon. Is he going to pursue this one? Yes, he is. The charm lands. The death mark goes down. It's going to be Dragon surely taken down. One more pop will do it. There's the passive going out. Tree Shop Raj rattles across. Manages to catch on towards the front lord. Taken very, the very low. Matroco trying to get on towards him. It's not going to happen. Jay Ree picking up the kill this time around. Carbono, he's going to get taken low. He gets killed out. Kraton picks up the kill there. Fantastic performance, and Kraton can pursue this. Can he get the triple kill? One more shot will do it. There it is. And that is effectively the ace. It all started with the death of Tesla down the bottom lane. And alternate are wiping the floor now with Wizards. 15 to 3. They extend that gold lead to 8 thousand gold right now dragon is up and it looks like alternate are falling back to set that one up what was wizards doing in the middle lane they landed the chain of corruption and nothing happened they they didn't have any follow-up on that at all well it's 502 for creaton right now 309 for pharrell and lord and that is going to be the dragon for alternate now they are really picking up and that's going to be the turret in the mid lane though tessa's going to try and take this one down he should get it 
That's a little glimmer of hope for the Wizards, but that's all it is right now. The 8,000 gold difference is a telling sign, and for Elnor, they're looking like a completely different team from the first game. Completely different. It appears as though whoever, you know, was sitting on the red side, and he seems to have the power in this best of three, because what a performance, what a turnaround. And alternate, you know, after we were questioning their, their motives, questioning how they played in the previous game, they have silenced all questions, and they just come out with such a strong performance. The only deaths right now being the top laner and their jungle. The rest of them, zero deaths across the board. So let's have a look across those items as well. We do see Tesla. He has been trying to dominate that split push, but have we just, as we've just seen, Kurt, they've been giving him the kills. He's been taking them 3-2-5. Now, the junglers, there was such a big difference before, and it's kind of still there again. But this time around, Aranea on Lee Sin has been successful in his ganks. He's 2 one, seven. The mid lane, huge difference right here. Dragon, look at this. A 3,000 gold difference between that mid lane and the AD carries. It's a 2.2k difference. Big, big differences on both the most important carries of the game. Exactly, and that mid lane, and that's effectively a death gap between them. And something you have to point out, Ferenna Lord has hit every single clutch charm that he's needed to. In the previous engagements, we've seen those kills going back and forth from the bottom lane to the mid lane. Every single time he needed to hit a charm, he did. And that is the reason they're chaining all these kills together. I thought he was going to go for the likes of a DFG from the Ninsky Large Rod. He decided to go straight for a death cap, because why not? He's doing so incredibly well. If he decides to go now for an Hourglass or a Deathfire Grasp, that's going to play into his favor. And as we're looking, 479 ability power right now. It's definitely going to hurt just 26 minutes into this game. You can see those orbs are obliterating. And Jerry, of course, with that Oracle on, will spot out that ward just been placed straight in there by Miffy. Charm being thrown out, flung it towards caught. Carbono. It did catch, but it didn't walk him the right way. That's always one of the things with a charm. Sometimes it won't always work in your favor. So he's also a max range charm as well. So, you know, he's going to take more than just a couple of steps to put Carbono in insta-death range. Right now, though, Ultimate, they're sieging up on this. He curve is running through the jungle towards this mid lane, and there's been no reply from Tesla yet. This is going to be a five versus four if Ultimate decide to dive. They don't necessarily have the highest amount of armor across the board, so they may be, it may be a little bit of a risky dive, especially now that Tesla's joined the party. So there's the tower. The pressure is down. It does look like Zach's, you know, jumping around, and this might be the fight. And managed to get a good half the hit points. That's going to be the final blow from Creaton, and that is the middle inner turret going down. An advantage definitely in Alternate's favor. They try and dive in towards Matraco. They do catch him out there. It's Jamie that picks another kill up. This time around, you can see Aranea diving in, and the rest of the team follow through. Miffy gets away, flashes out of it with nothing left. It's going to be Carbono. There goes Miffy finally going down. Carbono with his ultimate running there, just tanking him around the turret there. Jared Tesla also is going to come in there. Everybody's got to pack away. They're tanking the turret for far too long. And the damage still being poked out, but the inhibitor turret now goes down. It's a two for zero in the exchange, but more importantly, they've got an inhibitor. Pharrell and Lord threads the needle, lands the charm through everybody, and catches onto Matroko's Varus. That was the start. He dove in there with the ultimate, 100% confident in that skill shot, lands it, and then wins the fight, and it's not over. He wants to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tesla, and with the amount of ability power and spell penetration that he has right now, it's going to work. So, why is he Tesla back? So Away, but Frenin Lord, he's yet to play. He wants to dance. Wise experience, really, between these players to go down so heavily in a 45 minute match and just get absolutely demoralized to come back and pull out a performance like this has been astounding for them. So, 17 3 is the kill score. That equates to an 11,000 gold difference. It's 6 3 in towers. And more importantly for alternate, that middle inhibitor has gone down. Baron, of course, is available. They could choose that, and it does look like they're setting up for it. So I'm going to channel my inner D-man from the previous game and say, at what point do you surrender if you're Wizards? This is <laughs> the discussion that we were talking about. On the one hand, you know, Wizards, they do have this very beefy, very tanky lineup that can get, you know, to some point where they're not going to get insta-burst down, but they're so far behind in items and gold, it's going to take a very long time. Right now, though, there are some pings there on to Jay Ree and Aranea. You see a five-man wizard trying to fend off this you know, eventual Baron. Sidesteps the chomp, but look at the damage from Ferelin Lord. That's two spells, and that's hitting hard. But look at the damage also coming out from Tesla. He managed to catch up Ferelin Lord. Does take a chunk of his hit points down as well. So it shows he's not without target, but we do see Kerb diving in. Meanwhile, in that mid lane, coming towards it. And he's covering off for Unlord, who was taken down lower again there. The Wither came up from Carbono. So they're keeping the pressure on towards him. Aranea doesn't manage to land 
his kick there this time around. He doesn't fly in towards them. Almost baits you. If you land that, you're like, I've got to follow it. I've got to go yep. in. I've once, got to go once in. Once you land the, the least in Sonic Wave, you just want to dive in and hit that resonating strike. But this time around, he does play relatively patiently and decides to back off. And I, I really like that Ruby Sidestone in Israel. Such a great pickup. Right now, we've just got this extended duel right now as alternate off, split pushing the bottom lane, as you can see, for all clearing out the waves as quickly as possible. And the super minions in the mid, they're going to be keep, keeping wizards busy for quite a while. And alternate, they're just stealing away any and all jungle camps that they can. Yeah, they're going to push down towards this bottom wave as well. They did shove in towards that midland. Actually, Kirp is going to make sure their super minions do put the pressure down. That's going to be the bottom turret being picked up for alternate. And now those super minions are going to have to be dealt with. That means they're going to rotate across towards the top lane where there's a creep wave coming down. And they're going to keep on the split push. It's Pharrell and Lord that's keeping that pressure on in the bottom lane. While the rest of alternate, they're up in this top. They've got no way to teleport back and forth between each other. Between each other. So it's very much a two members, though, of wizards are being drawn down there. They're going to try and die for this one. They're trying to catch on towards it. But honestly, I'm not sure they've got the damage. Here. Kerb can turn around, does put his death mark down. No, they said he goes in towards Sessa, they're kicking Carbono. Now they're going to turn in towards him. You can see, oh, the chain of corruption does land perfectly, though. And RNA is in all sorts of trouble. He's going to get dropped down. Can Wizards turn this in towards their favor? They do manage to pick up one, but look up for another lot. He can smell the juicy targets. They are all so low. Wow. They do manage to take down Carbono, but the rest of the team get away with nothing. And that's going to be the charm landing on towards Sessa. Kreaton's following it through. Barrier comes down, Carb. That's going to be Matroco going down as well. Testers being chased in. Alternate could finish the game right here. So one of the very important things that happened right at the beginning of that fight, Let's Bounce was used by Dragon in the bottom lane to try and fend off Pharrell and Lord as they moved up to the top. Right now, Pharrell and Lord have the numbers advantage. They are pushing down the Nexus touch. They are going to even the series up at one to one. It's going to be all square, ladies and gentlemen. Alternate do take down the Wizards. And now it is game on once again in this best of three. We're going to go to the third and final matchup. Both times these matches have been devastating performances by the red team. First off, it was Wizards absolutely dominating. This time around, it is Alternate absolutely destroying the Wizards. Shell shock on the face of some of those players. And now the pressure is definitely on. It's all on for the last game. It's going to be coming up shortly, of course. We will go over to Joe and Jason to take us through that epic. Thanks a lot, Demon, and an epic it was again for, you know, not the traditional epic, I think we can call it, but 20 to 4 in kills there, 15,000 gold difference by the end, a load of turrets, the Baron's obviously going down, like, amazing, amazing play coming out of alternate, and this is a team that got stomped in game number one. Yeah, I mean, I was looking at that game, we were wondering, you know, can alternate turn turn the, the first game around and come back, and... Yes, they, they, yeah, as yeah, we found out in that game, answer. that was just, it was just ridiculous because RNA, he was such a major player this time uh, in the jungle, was actually able to create some opportunities, join the bottom lane, help get a couple of kills, and his least sin, you know, we don't see it too often, but it worked out pretty well. Yeah, and, you know, the irony about it is, well, Ariana banned out uh, for Pharrell and Lord, goes in with Ari 3 0 13, uh, having a commanding time in his lane, uh, and 288 CS he finished on there, just a mile ahead in items, but that obviously goes across the board. Uh, I guess we can jump into our uh, replay for this one. Yeah, and one thing I want to point out in this replay is exactly what Quickshot said during the uh, during the actual game. It's, you know, Frontler lands a charm, they follow up, and they get the kills. Like, he had so many clutch charms this entire game. So it's 23 minutes in. It's 2-11 in favor of alternate right now, and this is off the back of a kill onto Tesla. And uh, if we get the replay, I'm going to show you exactly what happens here because we have... I'm going to show you just really quickly. We have the rest of uh, alternate going to be coming in from the bottom side here, and they're going to catch him off guard. And I, I want to point out just the charms that land uh, uh, from Fraun Lord just set up the entire fight. So you see the crescendo, it, it lands on a dragon, pretty much just him. And they're fancying their chances to go for him as you see him. Let's bounce away. But then you're going to see the Fraun Lord come in. He's going to land a charm, and they're going to just blow him up with the Zed ultimate, with everything. They just kill him outright. So after he goes down, I'm going to skip a little, little further. You see Fraun Lord land another charm here in uh, just a few seconds, and it sets up another kill as he even gets low right there, gets uh, Matraka right there, they pick up the kill, and they just keep turning to kill after kill, and Cretan, who in game one just did not have a good time, was able to clean this up and pretty much get a delayed ace. It was just very well played, and that was the story of the game. It's, if Ronald lands a charm, we go in, we kill a person, profit. 
Yeah, very, very well played. And it looked like a completely different alternate team. We were said after game one, you know, was it Wizards that were amazing or was it alternate that weren't really on top of the game? The coordination wasn't really there. Where did the problem really lie for them? And it looks like that was fixed this time around. We thought, you know, red side, Wizards got a really good chance to sew this game up two for zero. But right from the very get-go, you know, credit where it's due, alternate really coming back. And, of course, that will put us into a third and fourth final game. I'm going to ask you this like I did in between the last one, Jason. Um, from the performances that we had here, do you expect any different bands coming out? For alternate side, no. I don't think anyone on Wizards was actually a, it was really pro uh, troublesome for them, but for yeah. Wizards over to alternate, Jerry Sona created a lot, a lot of plays. Like We saw uh, one of the earlier kills happen on the Mythi in the bot lane where they just so stood in that first bush Pop the, or pop the Shona, pop the, pop the power cord, and just blew him up instantly. Sona might be something they want to take away. The, the Lee sent out of Aranea, it's not really standard as a jungle you see anymore, but it, it created a lot of problems as well. He wasn't able to really set up a lot of fights in terms of uh, his ultimate, able to kick them back into his own team, but still, just the movement, how fast he was, he got around the map consistently, was really able to create these opportunities. Yeah, I really like just to uh, mention that as well, the sight stone on Lee Sin. Like, that's a really cool addition to have, obviously, to have the wards with you, the charges as you go around. That's, I really like that from Aranea, so give him a mention for that one. Since, you know, <laughs> we like to have him sat here on the desk, and uh, it's nice to see that he's performing well here today as well. Uh, but we're going to be going into a quick break, but of course, when we come back, we'll be getting underway with match number three between Alternate and Wizards. Guys, don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is all square, 1-1 one, one between Alternate and Wizards. This is it. One team will be going through to face the Giants tomorrow, and one will be going home. Heavy words. Heavy, heavy, heavy words. words. And, you know, for a team like Alternate who failed to make it out of the group stage in Warsaw, this will be potentially the second time they don't qualify for LCS. Wizards, a new up-and-coming team, they surprised us in Game 1, but let's be honest, they got taken down a peg in Game 2. Yeah, it was definitely an even match between them. Both have had one-sided victories. But the question is, can they even things out? Or in the third match, will it be a one-sided stomp? Or will it be a close, contested match? The question is, though, of course, bans. Bans are the big thing right now. And really, which one worked and which one didn't? We saw Aaron Air pull out Lee into great success. Yeah. This time, though, we also saw Pharrell Lord on Ari. And it's clear you can't really let him on Ari. No, you can't let the Ari through. He was able to win his lane. He was able to win team fights. He was all over the map, split pushing, you know, assassination damage. And it was just, it was such a mobile champion, they couldn't lock him down. The very last team fight, um, Dragon tried to jump onto him with Zack, used his ultimate, let's bounce, and Ari just dashed away a couple times and still came into the fight and was an impact because of all of the damage he was putting down and again, landing consistent charms. So Ari may be a potential ban, or they may try to find a pick that will work around an Ari. Yeah, and the Zac mid lane, it's not really a champion I'm sold on in the mid lane yet. Definitely works in the jungle, don't get me wrong. Seems to work very well in the top, but yep. in that middle, yeah, So, you know, not in, really. that, in that matchup as well, Dragon was building somewhat tanky. He went yeah. Spirit Visage first. He had, you know, a giant spell sitting there for a very long time. And but you see, that, that immediately counters what Soaz has always told us. Correct. It's like... If you're in the mid, you have to build AP. Correct. You have to do this. You have to do that. If you're stomping, yes, you can build AP. But if you're not, you have to build tank and sit back. But that only works in the top lane, he said. And there's one of these situations where he was being relied upon for initiation and to create team fights. And let's be honest, Wizards were never together as a good team. Mm. They got caught out, singled out, and got taken out you know, in, in, in and around the jungle so many times that there was never a straight-up 5v5 team fight because there just wasn't any Wizards alive to actually do that. Well, they need to get some Wizards as well to win this game as well. See if they can maybe pick a couple of AP champions up. It's definitely a possibility. We'll see how, how you know, it, it works in this matchup. It worked very well for them in game number one where we've seen, you know, the, uh, um, the Diana for, uh, for Dragon. And, you know, he played very well on Diana. And, it, you know, second game was banned up by, by Alternate. And it seemed to, you know, work, pay dividends for them. And there was Kerb, and he's been using that trackable. Hasn't got the headset on just yet. But uh, sort of good spirits between both these teams now. Obviously, they were all looking nervous at the start. But everybody seems to be looking happy now. We're just waiting for them to get themselves in there. We will, of course, see what picks and bans they do go with once things get started. So, Jarvan the fourth. Thinking him is going to be bad. Twisted Fate, 100% so far. Thresh, 100% so far. We've also seen a lot of NASA's 100% picked or banned. So Nasus is one of the big the, the big picks that was for me because in the previous matchup, Jarvan was not banned and he wasn't picked either. Wizards decided to go for Nasus in the jungle when Jarvan was available. So it tells me that you know they, they prefer Nasus to Jarvan, but it didn't really work out for them, especially because the wither didn't have all that much of an impact. You know, Ezreal was not building your traditional attack damage carry type of build. So it doesn't affect him as much. He relies on his Mystic Shots for damage and for, you know, the, the procs from his Gauntlet and stuff. So uh, I would like to see them maybe picking up a Jarvan again, but definitely expect the likes of Twisted Fate, Diana, maybe even Thresh, you know, featuring again for that 100% pick band rate. We'll see, of course, the players ready themselves up. We're not quite all in there just yet. They're just uh, getting themselves ready and waited. In their hands warm, it seems, for Jay Ree. Cracking those knuckles, I'm guessing. Making sure he's ready, making sure his hands are relaxed. And there's Aranea chatting away, discussing a few things with, of course, the tournament admins. We will have this, you know, game getting underway very, very shortly. There's a lot on the line here for these teams. Remember, whoever wins has to face off in a best of five tomorrow. So, Which would be interesting because the fact that alternate, like you said, play Giants in the group stage. Yep. Very close game from what I recall back in Warsaw. And of course, then you've also got Wizards, an all Spanish lineup. So you can have an all Spanish lineup or a revenge match, I guess, for exactly. a position in the LCS. And to determine who's the best Spanish team, or like you said, to claim that, that you know, spot back or to get one back. And of course, in that group stage, that was a best of one. So that was a game where, you know, arguably it's more difficult to prepare for best of ones than best of threes, best of fives, because you alter your strategy and your gameplay and your decision making based on what's been happening. You can go, well, I know that this is what my opponents have been doing in the last few games. 
games. We know that when Alterna gets ahead, Wizards feel the pressure, try to make plays and get caught out. So if Alterna can learn from that and pick champions like Zed, like Ari, like even Diana in this case, that can take advantage of people overextended and can obviously get another good early game lead. Things do get in the way, of course. There are many, many more games to go today. Don't worry. This is, uh, it's, only, it's only about 20 past five, and we've still got two more best of threes to go. So it is going to be a long day for everyone involved in this. Of course, coming up after this one, it will be TCM Gaming facing off against Sinners Never Sleep. And then after that will be Samurai in Jeans facing off against a Nexus. a Nexus. So it'll be, you know, another, you know, very, very heavy games to play through. So... Uh, once again, we are actually hearing that there is a, another PC being changed between the uh, members of Wizards right now. And it is, again, just trying to resolve the hardware issues, making sure that, you know what, the players are ready. And, and to be fair, you can't, you can't expect the guys to play. This is, this is potentially their jobs on the line right now. So we're doing the best that we can to accommodate these guys and, and get this, this game running as quickly as possible. There's a pondering look on the face of the admin as he stares intently at the computer. The SSD is being set up and will hopefully be ready to go as soon as possible. Of course, this is always the issue when you do have computers involved. Sometimes Not a lot we can break. do without our sport, really. It's the truth. It's a pretty <laughs> integral part. We could part. try tic-tac-toe, maybe. So that and probably an internet connection. Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, 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 paper, scissors as it is called in Europe, is a fun, good way to do it, but you'd have to do best of five or best of seven for it to be fair. There are tactics in this game. It's not a joke. It can be done. So we'll see how quickly, uh, how quickly we can get this match underway. And like I said, it's, it's all or nothing for Ultimate. These guys have been practicing and training for the last few months since going down in Warsaw. We spoke to Arne a little bit earlier, and he was saying, look, we've boot camp. We're, we're ready for this. And maybe the first game was just a hiccup. Yeah, Arne, if, you, if you're unaware, he's kind of like the... The hobo-looking type one that's on the uh, alternate team. You can spot him. You all know who he is. <laughs> He's particularly loud. So if, you if you're not sure which one looks like him, just listen just to the loudest listen for one. Him. Yeah, yeah, there's there's for a him. lot of love there for him. But in terms of the, the popular opinion, the popular vote, even after the game one defeat, alternate still have a 54% to 46% lead in terms of that vote. Good memory. Yeah. Good memory. Luck, lucky I checked that. Lucky, lucky, I checked lucky that. you had that in your memory banks. Of course, it is uh, alternate. You know, they were the favourites from pretty much the start of this. You yeah. know, after despite the Wizards having their uh, immaculate performance in Game One, I wonder what it is that's really swinging it. Whether it's simply a case of no name, I guess it must be because alternate have been around for a long, long time. I remember casting them way back in EPS. I believe they may have won an EPS as well themselves, um, which is the ESL Pro, Pro Series. Yep. Uh, which happens, of course, here in Germany. It is a German-based uh, tournament. Although I do believe there is an American one going to be happening soon. Oh, I'd, I'd be, I'm not sure about that one. But in terms of you know, the, the game and the matchup, in this particular game, because we haven't seen alternate outside of Lille, where they had a pretty heavy-handed defeat at MYM. They went down 0-2. They lost this first game now to Wizards, and they seem to have bounced back. So in this third game, it's, it's really going to see what these guys are made of, because all the pressure's there, and it's just a matter of whether or not Wizards can... Uh, muster the performance they had in game one, or whether they're going to continue making the mistakes from game two. Just, just noticing myself in camera. God, I'm looking <laughs> tired today. <laughs> Trust me, these, these are not huge bags under the eyes. This is the lighting. It's the lighting. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty warm in here in the it's, studio today. It's pretty toasty. But I'm not going to lie. We're here. We're here for the games. We're here for for the summer promotion to see who whose dreams are going to be made. Who's going to be one step closer to actually becoming to the a edge. professional gamer. I was thinking about going that way, but to the edge of becoming a professional gamer. It's, it was a bit cheesy. Mm. You forced me into it. I forced you. <laughs> I forced you. I see how it is. So if you're unaware really of what the situation is, of course, if you missed it earlier on, Meet Your Makers went 2-1. We're going to check the... Um, the uh, we did manage to go 2-1 earlier on in the day. They took down Dexter's Actually Evil. Very, very tough yeah. game as well between those two. That went on for a good three hours. It was a there was an hour plus game. The second one. It yeah. really was an extended series. Of course, they're going to be going through now. Meet your makers replaying against Dragon Mods. It's a replay of what happened in Warsaw. So that will be happening, of course, tomorrow morning. And then following that, that will be a best of five, by the way. Best following that will be the Giants versus the winner of this match, which is either Alternate or Wizards. We are, of course, going to go across to a interview, I believe. And it's going to be shocked. She's got hold of the Tess from the Copenhagen Wolves. 
Absolutely very important weekend as well for the Copenhagen Wolves. First off, uh, the test. Have you been able to watch this game? What do you think of the teams here competing against each other right now? Um, well, I've only watched these two matches right now because I've been traveling here today from Denmark. So these two matches have been kind of strange. I mean, it's, it's two Storm games, basically. So like, it's, there's been some shaky plays and some really good plays as well. So I'm kind of excited to see what happens in the th third game. Like, anything could happen. Absolutely, anything can happen. You say you've been traveling from Denmark. Haven't you been training with the team then this week, or? Yeah, we have. We've been. Uh, we've set up scrims in, in really good time this week. Um, tried to practice as much as we can, as effectively as we can. We've tried to be really focused this week because we really don't want to. We don't. We don't want to go out of LCS. Obviously. Obviously, Yo, you're going to be playing a Nexus Esports or Samurai in jeans um, on Sunday in a best of five. What do you know about these teams, and who would you like to be up against, and who would you rather not face? Um, so Samurais have been hyped quite a lot by all sorts of different players. People say they're really good, so we'd rather face a Nexus probably. But I think we're pretty confident against both teams. I think we'll stay in the LCS. Um, and obviously we've investigated both teams pretty heavily, so we know what we're up against. We know what they play. Um, I'd say we're pretty confident. It's kind of a shift for you guys as well, because in uh, Warsaw and in the beginning of LCS, you were always the underdogs. Now you are the absolute favorites. So does it also make have a shift in mentality for going into a game? It's yeah, it, it does. Like it's easier being the underdogs because you can you can only surprise. Now now there's actual expectations to us, and it's 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 just easier being the underdog. Um, of course, it's also really nice that we have like the backup in fans that we do, and that people have faith in us now. It's it's so it's it's good either way, and we're really we're happy that people like actually think we're good now. They absolutely do. And talking about fans, you've gotten a lot of fans uh, with your performance over the past few weeks. So tell me a little bit, what is it like to be a pro player in the LCS, to come here, to having to give autographs, playing here on this stage? I mean, there's not a whole lot of autographs and stuff in, in the studio here, because there's not that many, um, there's not that big of an audience. But overall, it's, it's really cool, and it's been a really cool experience, um, even if we were to go out. It's been a really cool experience, LCS, for the past 10, 11 weeks, however long. Um, it's just been great, and it's, it's really cool. Like, all the fans we have, it's, it's such a great response that we've gotten so many, f like, it's unbelievable uh, for us. And we were really positively surprised. One of these big moments, I, I think, for every one of the teams was LCS Lille. It was just a huge crowd. Was that also your favorite? thing to go to this, this season? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that weekend was really cool. Uh, we got to go to France, uh, do something new, and obviously went, we went 3-0 that weekend, which was really cool considering there was this big, lively crowd, and we got to win every match and get such a good crowd response. It was really cool. And the game against EG, obviously, took like one hour, and we won that. It was completely awesome. Absolutely one to remember. And then I have a final question for you. You didn't have Bjergsen when you started the LCS, and the moment you got him, you just beat every great team, you build up a great score, so now you have Bjergsen if you manage to qualify again. Does that mean we will just see you going straight to the top three, top two, top one? Well, you probably won't see us going 0-9 again, um, <laughs> hopefully. I mean, it, 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 it should bring us quite an advantage compared to last time. Um, the 0-9 was pretty devastating to our overall stats. And I do believe we can do quite a lot better than what we've done this season. All right, a lot to come. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure. And it's time for us to head into a short break.